Hey guys, I'm back again. So I uh, just wanted to post a very quick little review here of the uh, HTC One M9 and the HTC One M8. Uh, just uh, using the, the M9 yesterday, pretty much all day, uh, taking pictures and seeing what I thought about the device. Uh, and overall, I'd say that uh, the experience has been mostly positive. Uh, I do think the HTC has regressed in some areas when comparing against the M8, which is quite strange. Uh, it can be summed up with a quote out of, uh, games of Game of Thrones, like there's a picture online uh, where it's uh, this guy saying you had one job uh, and that could be like directed towards HTC. All they really had to do is like, like bring a, a, an amazing camera experience, put it on like the M8 and then we would have been very happy. But uh, I did take some pictures yesterday and we can see uh, basically how they are and judge for yourself really uh, from that but if we look at the actual build quality of both devices uh, this is still among the best built phones out there bar none uh, if not the best if you ask me it still and feels absolutely amazing in the hand especially when you first turn it on uh, if you're coming from like a plasticky device it's absolutely fantastic HCC has made the sides a little bit sharper and then before though we can see uh, it's a little bit sharper than the rounded off edges on the M8. Uh, some people may prefer the rounded off edges because it is a, a little bit uh, more comfortable. But then again the M9 does feel a bit thinner as well as a bit lighter in the hand. So uh, I do like also the way they've made like a textured effect on the metal there you can see uh, on the M9 here which gives it a little bit of more attitude uh, and also the biggest win in regards to the design is the obviously the change of the button power on button which was a faff uh, I don't know why HCC took so long to move it down there but uh, props to them for actually doing that and uh, we do have the front facing ultra pixel camera on the front which is a 4 megapixel versus your 5 megapixel one on the M8 uh, and uh, we do have the 20 megapixel Toshiba sensor on the back versus the uh, 4 megapixel ultra pixel on the back of the uh, M8 with the duo camera kind of set up so uh, some people might miss that kind of setup but others you know thinking it's a bit of a gimmick anyway uh, on the bottom of the device we have similar type of uh, setup for the USB uh, as well as the headphone jack and uh, both of them have this kind of uh, plasticky bit at the top which kind of sticks out a bit looks like it sticks out a little bit more on the M9 compared to the M8 for some reason I'm not sure why but uh, overall the build quality is a win you know there's no issues here when it comes to the build quality I do enjoy it a lot uh, in terms of the displays on both of these we're getting a full HD panel which is uh, very uh, similar to last year's some would say too similar uh, one thing I have found though going out and about with them uh, is that uh, the one on the M9 does look a little bit dimmer than the one on the M8 for some reason and as you can see here I've got uh, the one on the M8 on two bars here in terms of the brightness uh, but I have had to like customize the brightness here on the M9 so it's a little bit higher so it looks like uh, roughly identical as you can see if I was to put this on two bars here to show you you can see that's uh, a little bit dimmer than the M8 which uh, not really feeling that to be honest I don't know why uh, you know you'd expect it to be about the same or better so uh, I put both screens on full brightness here uh, and you can see that there and we can have a look at the kind of brightness here to see if there is any difference both are on the same kind of screen and uh, we'll find the brightest point there so we can see that's about 437 whereas on this one looks about the same if not less maybe uh, so it's actually a bit more there 
on the M8. Let's just make sure that's correct. So well, as you can see there, it seems that the display looks a little bit dimmer <laughs> on the M9, which is quite weird. You'd think that uh, buying the newest high-end good stuff from HTC, uh, they'd put a slightly better panel in than last year. But, you know, I think most people generally day-to-day -day aren't going to notice this kind of thing. But if you are an enthusiast, it is worthwhile you knowing this, because it is quite a lot of money to pay. Uh, and uh, in terms of the specifications, uh, you're looking at uh, DDR4 RAM in this baby, which is uh, with 3 gigs of RAM versus your 2 gigs of RAM in the Snapdragon uh, 8.1 M8 uh, versus your Snapdragon 8.10, which is an octa-core processor. But nowadays, I don't really talk about specs too much because... At the end of the day, it's all about the software and the optimization, which is more important. And I have to say, day to day, you know, the M8 is still very quick here, and sometimes surprises me in that it uh, can open up things a bit quicker than the new M9. Uh, it's not not a hundred percent clear cut. Sometimes the M9 does uh, beat the M8. But in general, I was expecting a slightly more wow factor with the uh, 810 because, like, the jump from the uh, Snapdragon 801 to the 805 was quite significant, and I was expecting the same kind of thing. But if you are expecting that here, then I would certainly say don't because it's uh, a very modest step up if you ask me and as you can see there the MA still loads things a bit quicker so not going to talk about that too much but uh, in terms of the actual uh, Sense UI uh, I think uh, again it's quite a mixed bag really uh, on some aspects I do like for example the uh, new themes you can put on here so uh, you can just uh, try one out here. So these are the ones that uh, HTC has created. You do need to sign up for an account to get access to them. And we have a nice uh, black theme here with some weird looking icons quite nice. Uh, the blink feed is there as well still and uh, it's uh, very nice and quick here as you can see it pulls in all of the things that interest you uh, and uh, if it weren't for the blink feed I wouldn't have actually known about uh, Oxygen OS for the OnePlus One so props to it for letting me know about that. Uh, but then again, the M8 is still very good in this aspect. It still does basically the same kind of job. Uh, so uh, not too much in the way of differences there. One thing I did notice though about uh, these two is the way that they handle the multitasking. For some reason, uh, HTC have uh, gone with the sense kind of way for the M9, which is a bit uh, unintuitive if you ask me. Uh, it does go kind of against the lollipop, lollipop conventions now with the carousel effect whereas the M8 does actually go with the carousel effect for its official lollipop build which is really weird to me why they would uh, differentiate there uh, but uh, I guess uh, that sort of thing is uh, down to preference really uh, in terms of the camera on both of them uh, both are quite similar here. Uh, obviously, you got a different uh, sensor on the M9, but the actual modes quite similar across the board here. So with the M9, you do have uh, like uh, I do like uh, the sense uh, kind of UI here for the camera. It's quite nice. You got your selfie mode, camera mode, panorama, and you can add other modes as well. 
Uh, you can also change like different settings here. So quite a few there that you can put on. You do get access to your HDR, night mode, etc. Uh, but obviously, what people are more interested in is the actual performance. And I uh, have to say, again, it's quite a mixed bag, really. I did take quite a few shots, uh, like uh, these two snappers out and about yesterday in a variety of different uh, kind of conditions. So I could get a good uh, look and feel for the new M9 camera. And it performs really well when it comes to the kind of like daylight conditions, uh, like uh, when there's really good light. Uh, but I think uh, things take a turn for the worse when the light starts to fade at the end of the day. And uh, I do see some creeping in of like uh, grain, uh, as well as uh, sometimes it struggles to focus properly. Uh, the M8, on the other hand, seems to be quite good still when it comes to the low light. Maybe because it's had more kind of software updates, etc. And I couldn't really see too much of a difference between them when it came to even the good light. So uh, maybe if you blew them up on like a PC, you'd see like a bigger difference. But I think where I did see a massive difference, however, is in terms of the video recording. Uh, the video recording on the M9 right now, I would say, is about is worse than my Note 2 in terms of the quality, which is <laughs> totally unexpected, really. Uh, I was expecting it to be very good, like a solid uh, kind of uh, camcorder like the iPhone 6 Plus, but, you know, definitely needs work there, uh, either for an update or something else, because... Even the M8 looks uh, like a lot clearer in the uh, video recording in low light, which is really bizarre. So, uh, so a bit of a mixed bag there, really. You know, I'm still holding out, thinking that maybe some software updates will help fix these issues along the line, because it is the same kind of sensor as the uh, Lumia 930. It's a Toshiba 20 megapixel sensor. Uh, the Moto X when it first came out was quite appalling when it came to the camera so I am holding out there hoping and praying that uh, they do roll out some more updates for it but uh, yeah just uh, be aware of that if you're thinking of upgrading industry leading uh, speaker technology but is it a massive step up from the M8 again you know it's uh, only slightly louder uh, in my testing however you can actually put on like a different kind of modes here uh, if you look in the settings such as theater mode uh, as well as music mode which is quite nice I don't think you get that on the old uh, M8 here so uh, as you can see, slight difference there. So uh, overall, I'd say that uh, I'd give it an incremental kind of uh, you know seal of approval. That's that's what I guess the device is. It's kind of like an incremental improvement over the M8. Uh, definitely don't rush out and buy it if you've got an M8 right now. I'd definitely recommend that you wait for like the M10. Because they have just changed the CEO, so maybe they're going to bring in some fresh ideas in. But then again, if you're coming from uh, something else, uh, like you know, you're sick of Samsung or something, you're still going to be very happy with the overall experience, I think, uh, particularly the build quality and that. However, don't rule out the M8, it's still a very solid phone, nevertheless. And obviously, it's uh, going to get quite cheap now because uh, it's a year old. 
uh, or even consider the M8S which is a kind of watered down version of the M8 but it is going to come out quite cheap so uh, yeah just a quick little video here uh, comparing the HTC One M9 versus the M8 hope you found it informative and uh, I'll definitely do some other videos comparing the speed of the M9 so look out for that and I'll see you next time cheers